Hi, Steve. This is the very first race wrap-up show that we're going to be talking about. Absolutely. Um, Great to be here, Miles, and uh, awesome to be able to put this together and do a little bit of a summary of, uh, of Gauteng Road Champs. Yes, can you give us a rundown? It was a fantastic day out. It was a good Brilliant weekend day. of racing. Yeah. Time trial on the Saturday, road race on the Sunday. And good turnout. Very brilliant. good turnout. Yeah. Um, let's take us through the course, the circuit. I mean, it was, I suffered out there. But if yeah, you're just... You were riding it. I got to sit on the mic and watch from the outside. But yeah, tough course. Everyone knows it. It's the, um, the cradle of mankind and beautiful area to, to get to ride in. The timing of the event also added a lot to the spectator value. And you guys were only off at 12 o'clock. Yeah, we I got remember. to actually sleep in for the day, which is not really, it's that doesn't happen often. Yeah. 12 o'clock race but start. You don't know what to do with your time under those circumstances, but it was great because we had the youngsters racing early on and they're all doing their events. We had a couple of the podiums and prize givings and then we had you guys arrive. So you got to see some of that stuff, but the youngsters got to see the pros arriving, which was which is brilliant. So a tough course out there. I think you guys 156 Ks. 156 Ks, excluding that little piece to the start of the circuit, five laps of the cradle. If you've done the cradle before, um, we did it in a clockwise direction. Anti-clockwise. Actually, anti-clockwise direction. Face the back of the clock. Yeah. <laughs> clockwise. So give us a rundown of the participants in your race on the day. It was quite a big field. Some some big teams out there on the day. Nine riders from Pro Touch. Um, yeah. Team Cycle Power had a full squad. Team Enza. Um, Shesha Fuels Racing also there, so very good, um, strong field in the day. Obviously yeah. a big title up for grabs, which makes sure that it's going to be some serious racing, but on top of that, 156 kilometers, which isn't the normal distance you guys are normally racing. Definitely not normal. Uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> we used to the flat past 100 kilometer races, although Pro Touch have been doing some, some international races, which has up their level, which we have seen from the last couple of weekends. They have been the team to beat. Yeah. Um, first and second in the last few races, but I mean, there are some good local guys who can stick it to the boys. And I think um, Shesha Fields Racing, um, Dylan Gerdelson, David Maria, you can't, you yeah, can't you can beat him with a stick it. enough to, yeah, you can't to, write him off to sit ever. down. Never, you can never write him off. Um, good to see Nolan Hoffman in the bunch and surviving till the end, which was quite good to see. <laughs> I'm still here. Give us a little bit of a rundown of how things went. I mean, you were in the race. You had yep. to deal with the actual racing. So from the start, it, it, it was very aggressive. On the very first climb towards Bayes Nordia, towards the satellite climb, myself and uh, Jacques Janssen van Rensburg got into a two-man breakaway. Um, and he has some, some big, big pedigree and results behind him as well. Oh, Ex-national uh, champion. Ex national road champion, he rode for NTT and uh, Dimension Data as well. He's also got a very good result at Race to the Sun recently, so he's got some very good form. So I thought it was a good idea to go with him on the first lap, and hopefully, a few riders would come from behind and join us. And so we got pulled back in after the first lap, and then uh, Kent Main and Ruan Deploy went on a two man breakaway, yes. also from Team Pro Touch. So you can obviously see Pro Touch racing very aggressive, but the rest of the team's doing an amazing job to, to kind of hold them at that three minute mark. Very long race. Team Psycho Power doing a very good job for, uh, for Jay Julius. They, yes. they went on the front, they, they did some, some hard pacing. And then Team Enza, Nolan Hoffman came on the front and did some, some pacing for his long teammates. Long stretches, I Long, believe. long stretches. Yeah. Um, kind of falling off and coming back, showing some fight, which eventually paid off for David Murray finishing off third. And then the, the final winning move, I believe, onto that, that final lap, just past the feet station, that's where that final move went. Absolutely brutal. I mean, 157 Ks, like you mentioned, we, we don't really race that distance often, which, which means it, it, it comes down to a race of nutrition. It, it, it becomes a survivor mode it by does, the end of it. it. Absolutely, because um, your legs are shot. Correct. So it, it, it was a small group of about 20 riders on the very last lap going towards the feed zone. And, and like I said, it, it was pretty much survival and Callum Ormiston put in a very good final attack. Callum, a very good time trialer, so he managed to put in a final attack uh, just past the feed zone. And Cheshire Fields Racing were, were chasing Dylan Gerdelson, tried to, tried to follow once or twice. But eventually he managed to get a good gap and rode it to the finish and, and won the race overall. So brilliant. And then the rest of the bunch came in for that sprint um, at the finish. It was a little bit of a mess at the end. I must admit we had multiple categories. I was standing at the finish line and the multiple categories coming in at once, which is good fun because everyone's on the sideline screaming and shouting for the irrelevant person. But I, I almost missed Callum coming in. Um, and then the actual bunch sprint got caught in some of the, the back markers of the vets as well. So it got to be a little bit of a mess at the end, but a brilliant race overall. 
100%. Callum riding away gave Gustav, uh, our team sprinter, the opportunity to sit on and he finished uh, second overall. So first and second for Team ProTouch and David Murray from Team Enzo uh, rounding off the podium for that um, overall third place. On to the data analysis. Uh, let's go into a little bit of the stats on what we could see on Strava. Now Strava stats are open to anyone. Go and take a look at this. Absolutely phenomenal numbers to go and look at, but uh, give me a little bit of a rundown. So Callum Ormiston, I tapped into his uh, Strava, so I did some Strava stalking. Uh, he averaged 200, uh, 232 watts for the full almost four hours so three mm. hours 47 minutes if I'm that not was mistaken. average average watts average watch so which means that, that's that includes watts. his uh, his freewheeling um when he's going easy sitting in the bunch so that that is average watts um maybe we can chat to him and get some of his uh, real real data which I is five minutes ten minutes twenty minutes i that think that would be, be impressive yeah steve the good bad and the ugly on the day there was lots happening can you give us a rundown yeah, the good for me, Miles, was um, seeing the number of riders out there. It's it's very good to see, especially at the younger categories, was participation all the way through from about 10, 11 years old, all the way through to the vets categories, very aggressive racing in the vets categories. Yeah, massive thanks to the road rangers. They did a fantastic oh, job keeping everyone safe. brilliant. Craig and his team are absolutely amazing. And I think with an event like this, to be able to put it on and have it in the cradle, um, those are national roads. You can't close those roads. So the riders have to realize that there's certain things that organizers can pull off and other things we can't. Being able to close off a national road is a massive undertaking and we're never gonna get that right on something like a provincial champ. So you know, to the, without the road rangers, that would have made every single one of those races so much more dangerous than, than it could have been otherwise. The ugly on the day? My ugly, and I got quite heated about it as well. The social media pushed out and the PR around it. Um, I think the intention was good. The organizers sent messages out to all the clubs saying, guys, please stay away from the cradle. To me, that's a PR nightmare. Um, we want people in to see the cycling, to engage with the cycling, to understand how to comply with it. Mm. You know, my ugly was that PR exercise, um, but it worked out all right in the end. What's next on the cards for the boys? Joburg Classic, um, a, a flat, fast, wintry, which means windy, uh, excursion to the West Strand. Correct, it starts at Tolton International Raceway, a different route to last year, it's 106 kilometers. So it's gonna be a flat, fast, like you say, probably windy route out there, and uh, starts at Hopper 7 this coming weekend. So, so looking you, forward to that. So you're looking to win it, eh? Well, I'm the defending champion from last year. There we go. <laughs> well, um, but new routes, new circumstances, it's, uh, and the, the guys are training hard. So it's going to be a very, very good race to, to be at and to, to attend. From Miles, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay fit. And from me, Steve, look forward to chatting to you next time. Miles, great one. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>